hello loves welcome back to the channel today we're going to be talking about something that's really 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 important to me uh you guys know that last year i had um well i don't know if i mentioned it on here actually but i enrolled in um a Taino tribe um so i am an enrolled member of hiwayawa um and my tribe released a language book in the fall, at the end of November to beginning of December, basically, um, called Hiwatahia, uh, the Taino language reconstruction book. Um, and my cacique finally gave the green light for us to, you know, open it up to the public for those who might want to um, buy a book um, and learn the language. Now, when it comes to the language, a couple of things because um, it's not like this is the end all be all kind of like language. There are a lot of like Taino language dictionaries. When it comes to the Taino language, um, because the language itself, uh, it didn't survive and it's full blown. Like we have like, you know, conjugations and pronouns and, and kind of like, um, where's that page so I can show you guys. Um, and kind of like the, the how do you say I am and you are and kind of those kind of phrases and words. Um, because those parts in survival is mainly like words to describe certain things or words to describe like roots or foods or areas of land. We have like words for so many different things, but we didn't have like, if you're going to speak a language, just like I'm speaking English right now, I am putting different words together to create sentences that you can understand, right? Um, but when it came to the Taino language, um, it was it was like bits and pieces of a lot of different things. Um, and so my tribe did a whole entire project to do the Taino language reconstruction, um, which because... Uh, I guess I, I can give a little bit of a background on it, but because the, the Taino language itself, um, especially when you look at the neighboring tribe, Taino as a language, uh, especially Taino classic, uh, classic Taino, what is considered to be classic Taino, um, is an Arawak language. Um, so Arawak and the fact that we're in Arawak, when people say we're an Arawak group specifically, um, they're talking about the language. We have a lot of like similarities with the language and we have generally speaking either the same words or similar it's just like um maybe like the way that it's spelled like on paper um it's a little bit different um like the the way that it's like dictated um so Taino classic which is considered like because we we were the tribes that are well we still are there but um we were part of the greater Antilles um we there was a huge focus on and one of the biggest languages um that especially with the beginning of colonization when Columbus came and everything with the tribes was Taino what was considered classic Taino as a language part of the Arawakan language um but there are other influences of the Taino language um not only kind of changing some of the other tribes um, but also the similarities between some of the other tribes in the other islands, um, in the lower Antilles specifically. Some of the Taino classic languages include the Siboney, Siguayo, uh, Locayo, and Maroki, um, just to name a few. Um, but this specific reconstruction um, language is basically the, the, the foundation of it, the, the, the base. You know how with the languages, with Latin languages, so, so like French, English, Spanish, they're all considered Latin languages. Um, the way that they did it for uh, the reconstruction specifically is that they use Locono. Uh, now, Locono is seen as a little bit more pure language um wise with Taino because it doesn't have any other influences um one of the things that Cacique specifically talked about is that um he had gotten some questions why did he didn't uh use or because the foundation of the reconstruction we, we have to look at neighboring languages to fill in the pieces of what it would actually sound like especially with the reconstruction language so one of the things that um Cacique was asked is why uh, we didn't, you know, he didn't go for or use the basis of our reconstruction language um, for it to be Garifuna or um, 
like Kalinago. And the reason why is because they have other influences. Garifuna, the language itself, why they where they are Afro-Indigenous and they have Taino influences as well. But the Garifuna peoples are also part African. So there are there is an African influence in the language. So it wouldn't be um considered Taino, like as far as like, oh, this is purely Arawakan Taino language. So specifically they chose to use um Lokono because Lokono is purely Arawakan and my tribe is always trying to strive to do a lot of Taino research and to make sure that everything is authentically Taino um, as much as possible so that we can actually not only maintain the culture properly, uh, but we're studying the right things as well. But they also did a comparison and in the back of the book there is a comparison of different words um, within the different islands and stuff like that, so which is really, really cool. Um, but one of the other things with the Kalinago, for example, that influence that has specific uh, Taino words in there is because the Kalinago as tribes, they were actually... Um, <laughs> Back in the back in ancient times, they would actually steal Taino women um, because they weren't a lot of Kalinago women. Um, they would steal Taino women, and the Taino women uh, they would like kidnap them from the islands, uh, and they would bring them back to their islands. And the Taino women would teach the kids that they would have their language, which what would be considered classic Taino. Uh, so the Taino language um that's why they within the Kalinago they have they tend to have two languages one for men and one for women because women ended up being Taino and so there's influences Taino language within their language as well which is also something that is studied as far as the words and the comparisons and stuff like that which is really really cool but the basis of the language itself is Lokono all of the like the whole entire language is not Lokono but the basis it's kind of like the same way that latin is the foundation um it's kind of like the the circular of the web of language wise um it's the same way lokono would be the the middle part um of how things branch out so there's still like kalinago as a branch and now um he watahia i'm always saying that backwards is part of that branch as well which i'm really excited um the other thing is that um my tribe actually worked with um linguists <laughs> on this book which if you actually look at and study um our language a lot of the language books that have been written have not actually used any linguists at all um so this this is actually a, a huge project that actually looks at the history and looks at, you know, how things, you know, basically like come together and actually for it to make sense historically and looking at the neighboring tribes. Because if you look at um, language that was also reconstructed, you can look at Hebrew. Hebrew was also a language that had to be reconstructed in the modern age um, in order for them to, to actually have a language today um which i think is really really cool that they actually got to do that and it's cool today that we also get to do that now um so i'm really excited to actually go through what one of the things i've been doing i know you guys see all these little <laughs> on my little like bookmarks um but i have been translating a lot of my prayers um that i like to do uh on here one of the first things i did was translate the akashic records prayer i am absolutely like just in love with this book and um that's why one of the words that i fell in love with um on here was okani which i changed my um username to which means sacred uh so my username now means sacred moon which i'm in love with um but i'm going to be doing more studies on the language book and just diving and i will be making more videos and stuff like that as i go along in the journey of learning a new language uh because i know spanish and english but i think spanish helps me more than english to understand other languages because i know spanish i can understand italian i can understand portuguese i can understand quite a bit of other languages because of that uh which i think is interesting but it was annoying when I used to work retail and I would get called to speak to customers that I that that were like Italian or something like that when I don't know Italian but I can understand what they're saying because I know Spanish um so with English I feel like it's just different I feel like English is just like kind of like the oddball with with the Latin language but anyway neither here nor there um but anyway so in through the journey of me learning um the new language i'm just like really excited to you know get into a routine um and just kind of like practicing the pronunciation and the prayers um and 
I just kind of like keep this charging in my like ancestral altar. I love, love, love this book. Um, and it just, and there's so many words in here also that I was surprised that are in here, um, that are more modern words that I was like, ah. <laughs> that are definitely like, I don't know if the ancestors had a word for these things, but it was interesting. Um, like it, it, it's just, it's so interesting. It's, it's so interesting. There's so many, so many different, and they also added um, words for for different things, like museum, for example. It's called wait, I have, they, and they also have like it's cool because they also have like I you can't see what they're like, but they have the pronunciation, what it would sound like as well. Um, and then we also you know talk about it in the tribe as well. But museum would be kaneba, 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 kaneba would be museum. That's interesting. Murder is a word um munch is a word mold is a word like there's so many um different words in here i love that one of the first things that i opened to was the a's um because i was just like i was looking for my name and i found it because my name well abby specifically um is taino it's it's a jewish abigail is a jewish name but i always want i always preferred being called abby that was like, one of my favorite things was when i found in one of the other languages dictionaries that abby is actually a tree in Taino, it's one of our sacred trees, medicinal, um, and we use it for sacred things. But it's it's Taino, <laughs> it's it's the name of that tree, and I thought that was cool, so I was looking for it on here. And then I saw the first word that I actually saw was abundance, and I was just laughing. There's actually two words for abundance, abayahu and abahu, like they, they shortened it. And abundance means you can either say ba or baya, which is interesting. So yeah, I'm just like in a study, in a, in, a, in a study form. I am going to be putting the information on how to purchase. It's going to be on the screen. I'm going to put a screenshot um, so you will see it in the, the next slide. And it will also be in the link down below. Um, but I'm just really excited to just be part of this moment. This is such an important moment. And our goal is to have like fluent speakers um, within the next two years. So I'm so excited. Also, make sure you're following Taino Library uh, because Taino Library has been posting a lot of content with content with the live with, with the library with the language um, and updates and stuff like that. Um, especially if you're trying to learn like new words and the pronunciation, they definitely know more than I do. I am not a professional whatsoever, but I will be sharing more as like as you know as I go along. And I just wanted to make this like update kind of video so you guys can see um, what I've been working on on Abby's. Abby's time <laughs> on Abby's free time I've just been studying um what will now be m one of my ancestral languages which I'm really excited about one of the things I also noticed is my ancestors are really really happy and when I got the book and I put in the altar they've been very 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 happy about it so I'm just gonna do you know put in the work and learn and practice and you know it's not gonna be perfect even though with the pronunciations and stuff like that because you have to kind of relearn and unlearn some of the, the, the nuances of Spanish and like the, the slang, the dialect, you guys know I'm, I'm Dominican and stuff like that. So, um, and my casique is from Quisqueya as well, which is cool. Um, but it, even just kind of like learning and, and unlearning, applying the things that I know about the other languages that I know into this and kind of shifting it because it is a native language. Um, so yeah, I'm just really excited to like, go on this journey and I wanted to share it with you guys. So if you do want to purchase the book, the information will be in the next slide. And any links will be down below with the information. Um, I love you guys. I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know you guys want more Taino content as well. And I will be making more Taino content um, soon. So stay up for it. Stay tuned for all of that. Make sure you're subscribed. I do have a Taino playlist uh, where I will post all of the things. Um, but yeah, definitely stay tuned on, on the journey and all of the things. There's so much that I'm going to be doing anyway. Um, especially I want to share my whole beadwork journey because I haven't started it yet, but I want to sh share what that journey is going to look like as well as I'm learning one of the skills and stuff like that. So 
stay tuned for all of the good good all the good good ancestral ancestral things especially i know like for those who are Taino or Taino descendants or are from you know the islands and stuff like that and you want to learn more about you know Taino specifically um definitely you know subscribe do all the things anyway i love you guys have a beautiful day